All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today we're going to do a video on uh, improvising and adjusting throughout the season, how uh, your depth charts, injuries, things that happen during the year make you have to make some changes, and you've got to keep those changes uh, somewhat consistent to the things that you already do so you don't have to teach brand new things. So I'm going to show you just a couple ways that we've had to improvise on defense this year. Make sure you check out some of our sponsors, Just Play Football, uh, digital software to bring your game to the next level. Um, it's the play diagram tool that I use if I'm going to speak at any clinics or do any webinars on my website. That is the play diagram tool that I will use all the time, so check out Just Play Football. Difference USA, which is the ultimate striking machine. We have one in our weight room attached uh, right to our squat racks. You can get thousands of reps uh, striking. Elbows in, thumbs up, working on striking properly. It's got different tension coils that make it tougher uh, to leverage in. So as kids get older and stronger and better with their striking, you can change the tension of the coil. You don't need a partner. You don't need a med ball. You don't need med, uh, bags. You don't need anything but a weight rack. Or if you go outside, you can put two by fours on the ground. Or they have universal attachments to where you can set them up on your practice field to some of your practice equipment that's already out there. So check out Difference USA. All right, Defensive Coordinator 1, which is an in-game app, allowing you to use live, actual in-game data to make critical adjustments. All right, a lot of times when you're making adjustments on the sideline, you're going off of things that you've charted or somebody upstairs telling you what they've charted, and you're kind of piece working things together. Now that you can actually input data into a, an app that already has a template going into each game with uh, a scouting template for the opponent that you're playing, now you can start uh, seeing what you're actually getting seeing the calls that you're making against the calls that they're making and then start putting together live data to use for adjustments so that the adjustments you make are based analytically off of things that you're getting and not things that you either think you're getting or things that you're trying to piece together the old-fashioned way by writing things down. Now it's actually in an app you can make uh, the proper adjustments based on the data that you are putting into the app. GameStrat, which is a sideline replay system we use, Make sure you check the description box down below in the video. Uh, it'll have a direct link to take you directly to GameStrat's website. If you're looking for the number one choice for coaches, looking for the most reliable, most affordable sideline replay system with great customer service, make sure you check out GameStrat. And then Dome Hats, which is one of the major sponsors of Play Fast Football, and it'll be a major sponsor of our Play Fast Football Clinic. The first one that we are putting on in January in St. Augustine, Florida at the Embassy Suites, January 24th, 25th, 26th. This is a dome hat with the Play Fast logo on it. All right, every hat has a story. Dome hat wants to know what story will your hat tell. They have a great custom online hat builder all right, where you can generate um, your own hats how you want to with your logo, different panels, make the, make the panels different colors, change it up online so you can customize it how you want. Great customer service. Make sure you check out dome hats. All right, so... Most of you that have been watching the stuff that I've done the last couple of years know that we are a 3-3 stack, 3 safety defense. All right, that's how we base. We base out of the stack because we like the simplicity of the run fits. Um, we like the multiplicity of the movements that can be created out of the stack. We like playing a 3 safety system in a more hybrid style defense because it fits our players and the personnel we have at my high school. I like the 3 safety system uh, to adapt to spread teams and then to also be able to adapt to uh, two back or heavy run teams. All right, so we are a 3-3 stack team. With our depth chart this year, we are a little bit deeper at D-line than we are at linebacker, and we lost a linebacker for the year All right, to, uh, to his third concussion that uh, he decided, we decided that it's probably in his best interest not to go back on the field. So we lost the linebacker for the year, which made us even lighter at linebacker. So we like our D-line better. So what we've done is we have a, improvised and adapted more to an even front, all right, more to an even front team now. So more of a 4-2-5 instead of a 3-3-5 team. Um, and we're trying to do the same things that we've always done so it's not confusing for our kids. So we're trying to make things uh, as similar to the 3-3 stack as possible. So for us, we base a lot of our run fits in the 3-3 stack off of double open B-gaps and ends and backers reading blocks of tackles to determine how we're going to play the B and the C gaps, how we're going to gap exchange those. So one of the first things we had to do was we had to find ways, all right, to take away 
all right, A gap so that we can play with open B gap. So obviously the easiest one is from a hedge front. So we can just move both these guys inside, all right, post snap movement. We move them both to one techniques. Now what we can do is we can let these two backers play just like they did in the stack front to where now we are reading off the block. If this tackle blocks out, all right, then my stack linebacker becomes a inside B gap fitter. If this tackle were to block down, we're going to chase and gap exchange. So if we get any down blocks here, we are going to chase and gap exchange. And now we're going to take the B gap with the end, and then we're going to take the C gap tight with that linebacker. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side because we are just creating those open B gaps. All right, because that's what we have in our 3-3 stack. That's how we play in our 3-3 stack. Our nose and our 3-3 stack and our mic are working both A-gaps. So now what we've done is we've just found a way, all right, within the even front stuff, we've now found a way to not change the fits of our fronts and our linebackers because what you want to avoid doing is you don't want to just all of a sudden become a four-man even front or a 4-2-5 defense because now your run fits change a little bit for your linebackers and how you teach those run fits, and we didn't want to change any of that. All right, so... The next thing we did was we kind of built some movement inside to cancel out A gaps by bringing, all right, one across the center's face to penetrate first and then looping one back behind the other way. Still keeps both open B gaps. We're trying to take both A gaps with the two interior players by keeping both B gaps open. Now we can fit uh, our stack linebackers the same. We're still playing the same coverages on the back end. Nothing's changing on the back end. All right, but what we're doing is we're trying to find ways to take away the interior A gaps, all right, while at the same time fitting runs the same with our two stack linebackers because we don't want to change their reads and their fits that they've been comfortable in the 3 3 stack just because we change personnel. While also keeping in mind we still play the 3 3 stack, all right, so we still, uh, we still base out of the 3 3 stack, but we probably play more defense out of our what we call our heads front now simply because the personnel fits our roster a little bit better based on injuries that we now have and based on depth at D-line and linebacker. So the reason we're playing heads is more of an improvisation all right, to where we had to adjust, we had to adapt to the injuries that we had to put our best personnel on the field. We still play 3-3 stack defense. We haven't abandoned the 3-3 stack. We still love the 3-3 stack. I love the run fits, I love the three safety scheme, I love the pressures and the movements, and we've had a lot of success in the 3-3, so we aren't getting away from the 3-3 defense, we just have to find a way to play with what we think is our better personnel and where we have more depth, because now we're already starting a backup linebacker in a 3-3 stack, and now behind that, you then go to a situation where you're getting to fifth and sixth linebackers, because now if you're playing three linebackers and one's out, you're already to your fourth, so now immediately you have to be able to get to five, six, seven, and that's tough to find in high school. We happen to have uh, six to seven D linemen that we like, and now that the JV season is over, we brought up some JV players, so we now have eight defensive linemen that we like that we feel like we can rotate in a game so the even front is better for us. So for us, what we have to do now is if we want to do anything different out of the even front, all right, what we have to do is we have to kind of change how we play the coverage so it makes it easier on our linebackers so that if we wanted to, for whatever reason, if we wanted to make this uh, a true even front and we wanted to move the front, let's say, left so that we have a one and a three technique, what that's going to do is that's going to give us a closed B gap on a side where it's going to change the reads for my linebacker playing with a three and a five in front of him. So what we do is we change the coverage behind that and we play more man-free concepts when we start to move with the interior linemen because now I want those linebackers to be a little bit freer in how they fit their runs. All right, so what we might do is we might go to more of a man-free concept versus two-bet where we go ahead and play man out here. We take two safeties as extra robber players, and then we let these guys bracket the two backs and fit off of the declaration, the path, the insertion of the two backs so we don't have to worry about teaching an open A-gap how to, how to plug or scrape or what you would do in a base 4-2-5 even front if you had an A-gap linebacker. We don't base that way out of our stack defense, so we didn't want to teach a new fit. So what we had to do was anytime we wanted to build in some movement so that we're not just double A-gap all the time, anytime we wanted to build in some movement, we had to change 
and change the coverage behind that so that we tied the movement up front with the coverage behind it so we didn't have to teach new fits. Okay, so you know, one of the other things we like to do that we get a little bit of mileage out of as a changeup is we like to take the ends under and loop our interior guys because we have two very similar interior uh, one one and three technique, nose and tackle, whatever you want to call them. They're both our noses in our stack package, and they're both shorter kids. They're about 5'8", and they're about 170 to 185 pounds. One of them is about 185, one's about 170, 175. But they're both extremely quick twitch and really, really good at moving. All right? They're not your prototypical even front one technique, three technique, so we don't sit them in an A gap and a B gap very often. So what we get a lot of mileage out of is a stunt where we charge the B gaps with our ends and we loop our interior players. Now for us, because we don't have enough time, we don't do defense every day. We do defense, you know, uh, two and a half days a week or every other day or a little bit of a period every day. Our kids aren't just defensive players. We have some kids that play both ways, so we have to practice differently. So we don't read out of any of our stunts. So when we call this stunt right here, we're going to run it. We're not reading out of it if we get a reach block or a different block. The tackles and, and the ends, we're never reading out. We're not doing anything different for us run our pass. It's a predetermined stunt for us. I think for our kids, it works better. I know that when you're running some D-line games, reading out of certain things puts you in a better situation. I 100% agree. All right, And most of your better college and NFL programs, most of their D-line stunts will be read out of based on the blocks that they see, or they will be auto-stunted based on the blocks that they see. For us in high school, with the kids I have, when we call a stunt, we leave it off. So we've gone to where we've gotten B-gap charge outside loop from our interior guys because for us, these two interior guys can really run. All right, like I said, they're about 170 to 185 pounds. They're both about 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and they can really, really run, so I don't mind them looping outside. I don't feel like I'm wasting guys in contain, and I don't feel like I'm wasting bodies taking 290-pound guys and making them loopers because our inside guys in high school, the guys that we use, are smaller guys that run really, really well. So what we then do is we, you know, we then kind of add on to that to where we'll take that stunt, and then again, we'll play some version of man free behind it so that it makes the, now we've got two open A gaps. That'll change the run fits, my linebackers. I don't want to change their run fits. I don't want to change their mentality. So we play man free and let them fit it off of a man scheme rather than and fitting it in a base run scheme. All right, so then what we do to that is, is off of the different stunts that we use, then we just add some blitzes to it to where we cross fire A gaps. And, you know, we might run it off of this loop stunt and cross fire A gaps into a six man zero pressure. So now we've just taken it and kind of built it week by week to where we built in the original package of how we had to play in an even front that fits the same way we fit runs in our odd front. Then we had to build in some movement to protect that even front, so we built in some movement in the A-gaps, all right, to help us out. Then we built in some other movements and played different coverage behind it to help us out so that we're not a static defense. We are moving, all right, and we have the ability to move. And then we had to build in some pressures to it and wrinkle it up to run kind of the same deals we run out of our 3-3 three, three stack box, we just got to get to it from different angles and different points. So, you know, we're sending six like we would in the 3-3 three, three stack. Our base six-man pressure that we run a bunch in the 3-3 three, three stack is just a crossfire on one side. So if we did it in the 3-3 three, three stack, one of our base pressures from the 3-3 three, three stack would be Inside, A-gap first, nose away, Mike cross second, ends outside, linebacker there, it's a six-man pressure. All right, so we've got all six gaps accounted for. Well, now all, the only thing we had to do is we had to change to where now we've got an even box. So now we just had to build in around what we already do with the coverages behind it. We can play hot or zero behind it. Now we just had to take it and kind of find ways to say, all right, guys, if we want to use those types of pressures, what can we do out of the even front? Well, we can long stick and edge pressure these guys. All right, it's still a six-man pressure. It's still the same six interior guys. We're just getting to it from different angles. So improvising and adjusting is always going to be important throughout your season because injuries are going to occur. Things are going to occur that you don't, didn't foresee. All right, so 
you don't make wholesale changes to your scheme, especially a scheme that you've had success with that you really like and a scheme that you teach on the JV level. So we didn't get away from our 3-3 stack. We just added more to our even hedge front package. Our even package used to be a changeup, another front to make teams prepare for something other than the odd stack to make teams spend time on an even front. Now the even front has been something that we're playing way more snaps out of because our personnel has dictated to us that we need to play that even front. So we had to find a way within our scheme to keep our fits very similar and what we do in coverage very similar. So we just had to work a little bit as a coaching staff to make sure that our even front package was simple enough for our kids to play so that we can get mileage out of it and finish a season. And we're sitting at four and two right now. Um, we played really, really good defense the entire year. Except for this past week, we gave up 370 yards passing. Still only gave up 115 rushing, but we gave up over 500 yards and uh, 35 points and gave up 11 in the last two and a half minutes with an 11-point lead. We gave up a 90-yard drive for a touchdown, and we gave up an onside kick and a field goal to send the game in the overtime. Luckily, uh, we scored first, kicked the extra point, and held them on four downs to win the game. So uh, we've been playing some good defense. Uh, we've had to play more even front defense than our odd stack defense because of an injury. Earlier in the year, we were playing more of our base odd stack defense. So find ways to get it done, find ways to improvise, find ways to adjust using your personnel. At the end of the day, you got to win games. All right? you got to put your kids in position to win games. That's what it's all about. It's up to you as a coaching staff to do that. Make sure you check out www.playfastfbclinic.com for information on our first Playfast Clinic in January 24th, 25th, 26th. 2020 coming up in about three and a half months uh, in St. Augustine Beach, Florida, Embassy Suites right on the ocean. Got some really great speakers, really great vendors. Think it's going to be uh, a great first time clinic and we're going to build on it from this year on and make it one of the best high school clinics around. So make sure you check that out. As always, I appreciate you guys subscribing, watching the videos, commenting on the videos. Make sure you click the subscribe button, click the notification button so that you know when a new video comes out, if you like the video, click thumbs up. If you don't like it, go ahead and click thumbs down. Everybody's got an opinion. All right, we appreciate it either way. I appreciate you watching. As always, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll see you guys next time.